We are Maria and Nicole. We're two secular homeschooling moms that have been been there, done done that. that. Welcome to episode 10, but what about high school? Can your high schooler get a diploma? Do you need to teach calculus? Can your homeschooler go to college? Today, we're going to be answering those questions and more. And as usual, we want to stress that our podcast is an inclusive space for your everyday parents that are looking for education options. We are not here to convince you to homeschool. Uh, We want to stress that you need to do what works for your child and for your family. Every family is different. Absolutely. And you know your children best. So uh, feel free to take what advice or information you get from here that works for you and chuck the rest. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Maria. How's it going? It's going great. Except, can you hear the raspiness? I'm getting over a cold. Oh. I, I kind of sound like um, Stevie Nicks if I was singing right now, <laughs> which, just... I, which I won't. Oh, you do love to do karaoke, though. You love to do karaoke. Well, I always get you up on stage with me. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, a little Demi Moore, that never hurts. I think that gives you a better radio voice. I hope so. Maybe I won't sound so nasally. <laughs> well. Unless I'm saying Chicago words <laughs> with my accent. But at least I got my cold out of the way before we start doing some of our crazy December things. Like, we're going on a carriage ride next I week. I know. I can't wait. I'm so excited about that. It's one of my favorite times. And all our teenagers are going to be there with all their friends. Yep, everybody will be home. It's going to be awesome. Well, technically it's a wagon because a carriage couldn't hold us all. It's going to fit 20 of us. Yeah, that is big. I do, do people get like angry about the semantics of carriage versus wagon like <laughs> they do about cottage pie and shepherd's pie? <laughs> They might. It's going to be a good time. I'm excited oh, to have, have our time. kids home for yes, the holiday. Yes, me too. I just posted on my Facebook page back at Thanksgiving the SNL routine of the back home ballers. Did you see that video? No. Oh my gosh, it's so funny. They do like a rap video of the kids coming home on like college break. And it's <laughs> uh, you have to go watch it. It's hilarious. I will oh. link it in the show notes. <laughs> It's yeah, hilarious. That's awesome. Okay. Well, I hope you guys are using those advent cards I put out for you a couple weeks ago because we've been using them and we are excited. We just got our angel tree and bought our gifts for our little angel. So that's always fun. So before we get started on today's episode, I wanted to mention that there's so much to cover on the topic of homeschooling high school that yeah. we decided to create an entire high school series. Yep, so we won't be doing them back to back, but we'll be releasing an additional high school series uh, episode like every few episodes. So in the high school series, we're going to detail specific high school topics. For example, we will have an entire episode dedicated to things like core subjects, um, transcripts, resumes, counselor letter school reports, applying to colleges, scholarships. We'll have an episode dedicated to testing, uh, SAT, ACT, Accuplacer. We will talk about extracurriculars and volunteering, socialization, friendship building, dating. Um, We'll have an episode about first jobs, earning money, entrepreneurship. We'll talk about driver's ed and driving, technology. Uh, We'll definitely have an episode dedicated to dual credit, AP and CLEP classes. Mm -hmm. Um, And we're going to talk about dealing with stress and time management, organization, and study skills. Yeah, it's going to be a great series, and it's going to help a lot of people get through those high school years. Let's get started on today's episode, but what about high school? Let's get right to it. Yep, some of you may feel a little confused and lost venturing into the unknown when you start homeschooling high school. And that's okay. It's all new to you, but the good news is that you can do this. Um, Try not to get overwhelmed with the newness of it all and the fears of failure. You can trust the process, and you're going to be learning how to homeschool high school right along with your teens. I actually think uh, homeschooling high school is a little bit easier than homeschooling the younger years because you transition into more of an administrator. Yeah, so the homeschooling parent we are now is not the homeschooling parent that we're going to be at the end of this process. Just like the parent that you are now is not the same parent as when you first had your baby. No, not at all. (laughs) Yeah, so be patient with yourself as you both get through this. The longer you homeschool high schoolers, the more you're going to notice your own imperfections. But remember, uh, perfection is not required to do this. No, and your high schooler will point out your imperfections to you as well. Every day. (laughs) Every day. All the time. (laughs) 
<laughs> but it's okay. Remember, homeschooling is about teaching your child how to learn. Uh, we parents are not supposed to be the best at everything. We're not. Um, and, you know, we want them to learn as adults so that they can look for resources to keep learning things they need to know. Uh, we're talking about fostering a love of learning. Right. One thing right off the bat is to take time to enjoy your teens. Uh, While your teens are in high school, academics, of course, are high priority. However, try not to get so focused on those academics that you do not have time to enjoy your child. Yeah. Try not to get so focused on those academics that you don't have time to enjoy your child. Nobody said that every day you have to max out everything. Your teen cannot work on academics intensely all day, every single day. So use flexibility like we talked about in the previous episode last week. Um, Use that flexibility of homeschooling to take time to enjoy them. You will want your teens to still like you when this is all over. (laughs) Right. To truly be prepared for life and career, homeschool high schoolers need to believe in themselves. We need to help teens find their self-knowledge and self-confidence. We can do this by listening to our teens' input, being kind with your words, asking them questions without judgment, allowing them to explore a variety of interests, and helping them to learn their strengths and weaknesses and allowing them to make mistakes. Right. A lot of teenagers, they're just figuring out who they are and they're experimenting with various ideas and behaviors and teens will have struggles all the time that you may not even be aware of with their friends or some personal situation that will affect them deeply and stress them out. Sometimes this causes them to butt heads with you, with safe people, and they're just trying to figure things out. That safe person is probably going to be you, but try to give some grace and not take it personally. And I know that's really hard. It's a lot easier said than done. Uh, I've spent sometimes crying, but don't forget that they are kids and they're still learning how to interact and deal with some of these stresses. Yeah, and we also want to stress, like we always do, that you have to do what works for your family. It's important to keep yourself in check and avoid feeling the pressure of comparing yourself to others that might have a more uh, high-achieving teen or... It's really easy to get caught up when you're seeing somebody else's child excel in something that maybe your child might struggle with. So just avoid that comparison. Right. And as some homeschool high schoolers want to own everything about their education and assignments, others are going to want daily engagement with you. And uh, sometimes what they want is not what they need. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe they think they want to do everything on their own, but then they get bogged down. They're still trying to figure it out. So help them, guide them. Right. You can handle this by finding common goals with honest, regular check-ins either daily some kids do better with that or even weekly some more independent students I know some kids that check in at the beginning of the semester and check with their mom when the final grade is due yeah so So if you're struggling and butting heads especially in a certain subject it might be a good time to outsource a class Um, you want to avoid bringing in additional stress to your relationship and there's also just going to be bad days when no schooling gets done at all right and some days are just really rotten and schoolwork needs to be set aside maybe on those days and wake up to a better fresh tomorrow it's a new day and you can model resilience with for your teens and that's a great life skill to teach them you can do this we are living proof between our two families we've graduated three Mm -hmm. there's a lot to learn as you work through this but nothing that you can't work through yourself for sure Okay, getting back to our three main questions. The first is, can my homeschooler get a diploma? So it's funny, I've seen this a ton lately where somebody will ask this on a message board and another person or people will immediately answer, no, no, you have to get a GED. Um, No, you don't. Mm -hmm. And also don't answer questions that you don't know the answer to. Homeschooling is legal in all 50 states. And in many, like here in Texas, a homeschool diploma carries the exact same weight that a public or private school diploma does. So there are some states where this might differ. Um, I know in New York, there are some places that don't take a homeschool diploma. You have to get a special one from the state. And, you know, some things like beauty school or overseas colleges might have different requirements. But for the most part, no, you can homeschool and you can get a diploma. Right. A diploma is also, it's just a piece of paper. Mm Mm-hmm. 
very rarely are you ever asked to produce this document. Yeah, I never have. <laughs> right. You can make one yourself. You can just print it at home and sign it. You're the you're the teacher, you're the principal, or you can even order one professionally. There's some we're going to have a resource on our website in yeah. our show notes that I printed. I love the binder it comes with and Yeah. Yeah. I ordered my own as well. Yeah. So what is really important, especially if your student is college bound, is a transcript. And we're going to be talking about that during our high school series, during the transcript episode. Yeah. But meanwhile, so what a transcript actually is, is um, a record of your classes, grades and GPA. So you make one for all levels of high school and then any college coursework completed before high school. There's tons of transcript templates online. I actually uh, made one that I cobbled together from different ones I saw on Pinterest. It's kind of a a mad scientist uh, version of a transcript. Right. We're going to have a great one whenever we do our transcript episode for people yeah. to download once we guide them through that process. It'll be great. And you can make a transcript by year or by subject. Um, a subject transcript is a great option if you're also including classes from eighth grade or um, some people do what's called a super senior year, which is like a fifth year of high school. Um, or maybe if you're taking a lot of classes in a semester, like shortened semester classes, a lot of dual credit courses are offered this way. My kids liked to really stack up a bunch of those right. classes, but it, it can look really weird to have that many credit hours in one semester. We did so that. Yeah, and Riley just had three classes to finish high school, and yeah, I just spread it out so it didn't yeah. look so weird, but she enjoyed that time off. And you'll also, uh, you also may want to include a resume or a second sheet that lists all of your child's accomplishments, awards, um, any kind of volunteer work, clubs, other activities. And this is typically called a resume and is also detailed out in a college application or a college app um, if you do that. Uh, but I liked to make it the second page to our transcript personally. Mm, I didn't know that. I didn't do that. Yeah. I did it completely separate. Uh, so whenever it comes time for graduation, um, it's really up to you what you decide to do. A lot of families might just do their own thing with their extended family, maybe go to a big fancy dinner. Some people like to buy the cap and gown. I did. My oldest graduated with her. So actually, she graduated with her associates one week before I graduated her from high school, <laughs> which is funny because she had one last class that she was finishing for me before oh, funny. Uh, her, her uh, college graduation um, requirements were met. But so we kind of had two graduations because the college did one on the stage, which she really wanted her grandparents there for. So they came. Uh, that was huge and a little overwhelming, but it was really fun for her. It was a celebration for all of her accomplishments. And then some of our homeschool friends decided to do their own graduation, a high school one, uh, about, I don't know, about three weeks later. And that was a great event. It was a lot more invasive for me because uh, all the moms banded together and decorated the place. And, you know, we put together a big potluck. It was It was a pretty grand event, actually. And that was fun, but by then, <laughs> my family had already celebrated, so I got to invite them to one. So <laughs> I was the lone supporter while her brother was doing a production in, um, I don't even know what that one was, West Side Story, maybe? Oh, I don't remember. <laughs> then I decided I really wanted to do something for everyone, all her friends and family, so I did a huge graduation party. Uh, yeah, that was, it was a, so much fun. Oh, thanks, Nicole. It was, a, it, was, it was a big deal, so I put a lot into that, and I did a huge buffet. I made all the food myself. As you already know, yeah. I'm a single mom, so I'm on a strict budget. So, you know, no catering. I did it all. So uh, I probably did it all for maybe under $300. And yeah, what I had like, I don't know, 80 people here. It was a big party. And you wrote a beautiful letter, like detailing mm -hmm. out your whole homeschool. I hope you like printed that and put it in a book or something I did. for her. I printed it. I gave it to her in a letter so she could keep it. I kept it myself with my jewelry box because I didn't want I, I like to open it up and read it yeah. because I kind of, yeah, I reminisced about all the things and a lot of the people there that she grew up with. It was awesome because between park days and all the art groups and geography club, all the things that we did was kind of, I just summarized it in there. And I know we all kind of wanted a copy so that we didn't have to write our own because it was a lot of the same events. 
in yeah. activities. Yeah. It was such a great, it was such a beautiful letter. Yeah, thank you. So that was a lot of fun. So so now she's off studying engineering. So I'll yeah. be home next week. So excited. Yay. And so we did not do, my older two, we did not do a, a graduation ceremony. They did not want to do one. And I kept bringing up like really embarrassing ways that we could do one. <laughs> um, and they were like, no, no. But also in our defense, uh, it was, I had one that graduated in 2020 and one that graduated in 2021. So um, we were right in the throes of COVID. Nobody was having large gatherings right. and it was a little awkward to try and figure out. So we did do, um, you know, cupcakes with friends at the uh, Lake Beach and things like that. But And you also got your professional diploma. Yes. Yeah. And, um, oh, my, and then my son opted to do his, he graduated then two years later from Colorado State University and he opted to do his big graduation then no, so that was fun. yeah that was so we went fun. up and did the big college to do we threw a party in his college town for all of his local friends and then this summer we had a big uh, graduation party at an Irish pub uh, here in town oh, for and they did a jig oh my gosh oh I they can't... did a lot of dancing yeah we had a Kaylee and I was so excited to see some of those kids that hadn't danced in years get up there oh yeah and it all like comes right back I mean they might have needed to stretch out well because before. it was at an irish <laughs> pub and it was during the, the middle of the day that there wasn't there we were pretty much the only people there yeah there was this lone couple at the bar and as soon <laughs> as those kids started dancing they came to life that was, it was so funny they uh, probably were like what did we walk in on right? like what is i didn't know this bar was gonna have live music but and dancing but anyway we did buy gowns you know you can just buy graduation gowns in any color off amazon right. um i think then i passed them along i might have passed them along to you you did yeah um, one was a little bit too big jack's so big yeah and then jane's was was her college colors so I, I don't remember if I gave that on to somebody but yeah so you can order those we bought the gowns to do photos big or small whatever kind of party celebration you want to do is fine you know I just always stress ask your kid what they want it's it's there like I get that we want to celebrate um Right. Our, our, we're accomplished ourselves, too. Yeah, uh, you know, we have a huge accomplishment. And I here. feel like we, as moms and our parents together, we kind of do that. Like we've had some mom's <laughs> night outs where we're like, "Yay, us!" Yeah, you know, we did this. Yeah, and by then the kids like over us, <laughs> right? But yeah, ask your kids. I see that question come up a lot on message boards. They're like, "What should I do for my my kid doesn't want to do a party? What should I do?" And I'm like, uh, "Listen to your kid that doesn't want to have a party." Right. Like it's do them. do what your kids want. Yeah, it's it's their celebration. I mean, we facilitated the entire journey, but this is their road. So celebrate them how they want to do it. All of them are different. Some kids are really introverted. They don't want to have a big shindig. Yeah. So anyway, it's okay. totally fine. So yeah. let's move on to our next question that is looming, the do I need to teach calculus? Do you need to know upper level math and science to teach it? No. no, no, you can outsource. Uh, we actually use an upper level math and science school that we're lucky to have locally. It's a brick and mortar homeschool school. And it's run and taught by a man who has his PhD in chemistry. Love you, Brian. Yes, we do. We love Dr. Reed. Um, the kids love the class, um, and it allows for labs not to be done in your kitchen. They get to hang out with friends. Uh, they study together. If you're in the Dallas area, here's a plug for thinking Reed's math and science in Plano. They really enjoy it. All right. We'll have a yeah. We'll have a link to his website on our show notes. Yeah. Yeah, so there are also several online single class curricula for different courses that you can choose from. Yeah, I see people recommend a math school often uh, that's online. And it's funny because I remember that this math teacher used to actually teach an in-person class at a co-op we belonged to in Atlanta when my kids were little, like 20 years ago. Really? But now I guess it's like this very famous <laughs> math program that a lot of people use. There are also a lot of a la carte classes that you can take through sources. We've done a few like OutSchool or the Well-Trained Mind Academy, and there's many others. We're going to have some of those resources in our show notes. And you can opt to do dual credit classes. That's what we did at the local college. We live in a county where you get a scholarship uh, by residing in that county. And so it's free. Basically, some of the supplies can sometimes be costly or you know you get a resourceful teenager and they can find it for free online 
Yeah, but dual credit courses are nice because they satisfy high school credits while knocking out college credits at the same time. Uh, we both did this through our local community college, but there's also tons of options for dual credit online as well if you don't have a local option. Like Arizona State University has a universal learner program that's pretty cool. Um, you can take a course for free and then you only pay it if you want to keep the grade like on your right. transcript, which is a great way to try out a class if you're not sure if your kid is college ready. My kids also absolutely loved the composition classes they took as dual credit students. Writing composition work was not, at the high school level, was not something I was really looking forward to teaching myself. And I wanted them to have the freedom to really write creatively for like somebody else. Right. Yeah, one of my kids' favorite classes was a public speaking class that they took. And that professor still to this day is one of her favorite teachers ever. Most homeschool curricula is scripted and or you can learn right alongside your student. Yeah, so I talked about this in another episode, but I struggled with math a lot as a student myself. And I had my parents paid for tons of tutors, extra classes. There were a lot of tears at the table with my mom and dad. Math tears. Um, yeah, math tears to the 10th power. Mm-hmm. Nothing seemed to help. And um, I really actually worried about this as a homeschool parent. And then I read somewhere that a lot of people who struggle with algebra, for instance, actually missed like a key concept like way earlier on, like most likely in fractions, decimals, or percents. So um, as I did math side by side with my kids, I somewhere along the line picked up whatever that was that I missed. And now math seems to come easy. It's kind of amazing. Well, how about that? That's pretty cool. A lot of homeschool curricula is organized. So parents present the information as written. So students then just do the work and the parents grade or assess it from there. So you absolutely do not need to be an expert. But sometimes on these subjects, you can get better at them. Sure. We're all learning together. I love that. So can my homeschooler go to college? Well, there are so many different pathways that homeschoolers can choose to take after completing high school. And while many are college bound, several also choose other things like the military or a trade certification program or the community college. And that's fine. Yeah, determining what path your child will want to go, though, can help you to craft your homeschool high school experience. I do see a lot of people struggle with trying to figure this out really early, and I want to stress that it is totally normal for a 14-year-old to not know what they want to do for the rest of your life. I do that now in the public schools, that they actually make you choose a Choose course. like a, a pathway. And, and you, I, can't, you can't switch it. No, I think that's so unfair. Like, I still don't know what I want to do. I'm 48 <laughs> years old. Um, and so when I'm asking, like, your kid, your 14 or 15 or 18-year-old kid what they're planning on doing, I, it's really, I'm just looking for ideas right. <laughs> for myself. <laughs> Well, you're also, you're, you know, a lot of times you're identifying their, you're helping them to identify their strengths and their weaknesses just to kind of start thinking about it. But the idea of actually choosing for a four year or for a lifelong, eh, no. Yeah. (laughs) And I mean, a lot of kids might think that they want to do one thing and then change their mind later. And again, that's okay. We recently found my husband's ACT score. And I guess they had a section that you would write what your major is going to be in college and like how sure are you that you want to do that for the rest of your life and um his was zoology oh really (laughs) and we just found that really funny because he is not a zoologist at all um so we like kind of laugh about that now oh hey zoologist john like what (laughs) what are you doing with that degree (laughs) our good friend mary her son chris his entire life it was just music 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 he performed he learned everything learned all the instruments and that's what he was going to do that was his career and like weeks before graduation he says no i'm going to do computer science oh my gosh (laughs) and a complete about face but that's okay that's, totally. Yeah. And, yeah. But in a public school environment, that might be a problem because they make you choose certain courses that are with a, in alignment with the pathway that you've chosen. Yeah. And in my opinion, it's our job to just give them the ultimate schooling experience that's going to prepare them for any of the pathways that they might choose along the way. So for our family, that means a full high school academic plan with college in mind, along with a variety of extracurricular activities and community service. And um, that those can be volunteer work, scouting, clubs and other activities, uh, right. theater, musical instruments, etc. Right. And if you're looking to do a college prep type approach to your homeschool high school, 
I'd recommend looking at a variety of colleges and looking to see what they require for admissions from students. Many have a section for homeschool students specifically, and many review homeschool private and public school applications in the same way. This is a good source for seeing what colleges want in terms of classes. A lot are looking for traditional four years of math, four years of English, social sciences, science with three labs, and two to three years of foreign language and electives. Yeah, they're also going to talk about what they require as far as test scores. So then you're going to want to incorporate test prep into your coursework as well and figure out schedules for taking those. Right, and we're going to be doing episodes on all of this, laying it out for you to help you guide you step by step on exactly how to do that and how to sign up for these exams and how to help study for them and recommendations on and setting your student up for success for sure and we talked about this briefly already but a lot of homeschoolers opt to do uh, dual credit classes in high school Uh, both our families have done this it's free or low cost in our area so we have kids that were actually able to obtain associate's degrees while still in high school which was a huge savings for college then and that may seem like a really huge academic undertaking but honestly it's not because oftentimes one class for one semester counts as two high school semesters so you're getting a two for one you actually are doing harder work or maybe more rigorous work but for a shorter period of time yeah yeah. And this, uh, I mean, this saved us both financially and it was a time savings. Uh, my son graduated from college in just two years uh, because of this. And it's also enabled our kids who are currently in college to double major, minor, because they had those classes knocked out ahead of time. And it's also a great way to demonstrate rigor on a transcript um, some with some real college grades that kind of back up your homeschool transcript. Not that homeschool grades aren't real, too, but especially if you're teaching from a mastery approach, you might think like your homeschool school A's aren't taken as seriously as a community as like a community college's A is. Right. And even if you don't do a dual credit route, it is often advised to at least take one or two classes outside to show on your transcript that somebody other than mom has taught. So we'll be going over a lot more of that during our high school series. Our first one starting on January 12th, and it's going to be covering high school subjects. Also, we're going to be talking about what electives your high schoolers should take and what constitutes a high school credit. So that first episode on January 12th is going to kick it off, and then we're going to be doing one episode a month in our high school series. So make sure you stay tuned and check that out. So a big concern for many homeschoolers is testing. And for those of us in states that do not require any kind of testing or have kids that have never been in a school environment, um, testing can be an overwhelming idea because it's possible that the ACT, SAT, or like the TSI or AccuPlacer is the very first test your students take. That's what happened with Riley. And it can also seem confusing taking in information regarding like the PSAT and all the other different testing options. I've uh, seen the CLT uh, recommended often as a test people uh, opt for as well. It's more of a classical style test. So it's often recommended for homeschoolers who've come up through that traditional classics trivium style of learning. But Invest in a test prep course or something like that. There's a teacher here that we know was a homeschooler and she's actually, she teaches an AP course at the local high school and she ended up teaching some of our kids SAT prep course that helped Riley a lot. Yeah. And some schools are test optional. Um, We saw that a lot through COVID. In fact, one of my kids had to go this route because she couldn't take any tests because uh, they kept getting canceled. So (laughs) test optional sometimes does not apply to homeschoolers, however. Some And also sometimes scholarships are tied to test scores, so I always recommend at least attempting the tests. You may surprise yourself, and testing, whether we like it or not, is going to be part of their college experience regardless. Right. I'm not a huge fan of testing in the early years, elementary, even middle school. We didn't do any of that. We always taught to mastery. If they are college bound, especially, they're going to need to know some of these skills. And testing is a skill in itself. And sometimes in study skills classes, they will teach you some techniques on mastering an exam. Yeah. Another route to college to avoid testing or to save money is to go to community college first and then transfer. This can be done as dual credit or after high school graduation. So you do want to keep in mind that most colleges don't consider 
classes earned while you're still in high school is transfer credits. So even though our kids graduated with associate's degrees, for instance, they were still encouraged to apply to all of their colleges as freshman students. And then they remained freshman level until those credits eventually hit, which for us was sometime like the first semester. Right. There is a, there is an option. You can, as a dual credit student, if you take a class after, like maybe the summer leading into your fall semester, if you want to do a transfer in. We opted not to do that because I really wanted Riley to have that whole freshman experience, learn the campus, learn you know some of the traditions and maybe get involved in some clubs, which sometimes aren't always a huge draw for some of the older students. So I really wanted her to have that. And I love that she joined the racing team. Yeah. <laughs> some schools have a specific requirements on how many classes you have to take post-graduation to apply as a transfer student. And there's also scholarships that are freshman scholarships that might not be available afterwards. Now, a lot of people like to say that there aren't any transfer scholarships, but that's not true. We've looked into that before, too, and there are. Right. Now, some schools, like my daughter's school, um, still requires a four-year program. So even though she already had an associate, she's got two years worth of college done, she will be there for four years. But all those dual credit courses means that she reaps the benefit of priority registration. She gets the first choice in housing due to her upper class status. So right. <laughs> um, it, it kind of worked out anyway. It's like a bonus. Most community colleges require some sort of placement test, but that's not like the same level of test as a SAT, ACT. Um, and sometimes if you have an SAT, ACT, you can avoid the community college placement test. But I see a lot of people trying to avoid uh, testing at all with their homeschoolers. They'll be like, oh, my kid has test anxiety. But if their kid's never taken a test, you don't really know that they have test anxiety. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that might be you putting your test anxiety on the kid. But these really are more informational for the college than they are a test of what your students know. So, you know, for people who want to avoid those, these really aren't a stressful test at all. Right. And one thing I really wanted to mention about this is my daughter, and I know your children too, uh, after taking dual credit classes, learning how to communicate with the professor, learning how to communicate with other students, maybe in discussion boards that are required for the courses. There's a process that they've already unlocked. They already know how to do that. So they were already one step ahead of all the other freshmen entering in because some of those kids have never had that kind of relationship with their teacher. Yeah. So that was a huge, huge bonus for them. Oh, for sure. And we have two book recommendations for anybody interested in choosing to do dual credit with their student. And both books are going to be linked on our show notes. So check them out because they are absolutely a must read for anyone wanting to go this route. Some ask about whether homeschoolers will be prepared socially for college. And this is kind of like that question we all got in the <laughs> we all got in the what about the prom episode. Not everyone is socially prepared for college, and this is regardless of whether they were homeschooled, public schooled, or private schooled. Right. Um, college involves a lot of big changes for kids. Um, you're living on your own for the first time. You're experiencing all different kinds of freedoms and ideas, and you're learning to manage your own time, and that's a huge change. Right. Not all students adjust well to that change. Yeah. I will say that my students felt like they were better prepared than a lot of their counterparts because of homeschooling. They had been exposed to a lot of different people and social settings in their lives. They had taken a lot of different style classes. They were used to managing their time. Right. So. You know, again, you might be surprised at how well your student does adjust, but it's really not going to be because of the way that they were schooled. It's a lot more about personality and perseverance. Right, exactly. And again, we were kind of specifically talking about college here just because it's a question or statement that we often see about homeschoolers not being able to go. We know plenty who have successfully, including our kids, that have excelled in college and know personally that that is not true. It's also totally fine for kids to choose military, trade school, or certification program as well, um, or other things like maybe they're going to go into their family business or become an entrepreneur, which we will talk about in another episode. Right. Some people think that if you don't go to college, you're a second class citizen. Not true. No. That's simply untrue. Trades are not a lower class. Trades are necessary to our livelihood. 
Right. The options are really endless for these kids. And because they have been given freedom to learn in a more flexible and creative environment, don't be surprised when they want to choose that for their future, too. Independent thinkers are going to rule the world. They absolutely (laughs) are. Okay, well, we covered a lot. I think that was a pretty good episode, Nicole. I agree. Check us out next week. We're going to be dropping an episode every Thursday morning by 7 a.m. Our next episode is episode 11, all about family. We're going to be discussing how do you balance multi-age students. We're going to be talking about how to encourage strong sibling relationships and how to encourage extended family support. So tune in next week. See you then. Bye-bye. Cheers! Be sure to check us out on our website at btdthomeschool.com, as in been there, done that, btdthomeschool.com. You can join our mailing list and get news and updates on future podcasts, and be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform and follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, at the BTDT Been There, Done That Homeschool Podcast.